Let's tilt down this way. Okay, we're going to come back there. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. It is December. Christmas preparations are in full swing. I'm going to do a holiday colored pour. Reds, greens, whites. Very excited about that. So I've got a divided canvas. This is a technique that I've never done exactly like this before. Uh, my good friend Claire Calvert, she has done a lot of these. Actually, it was these paintings that she did, it was several months ago, that first made me notice her channel and be like, ooh, let me watch this lady more. And uh, now we're great friends, so that's, that's fun. But I have two color combinations, as you know, greens and reds do not like to play very well together, and so I want to keep them separate. So I'm doing it in stripes. So this is going to be a straight pour. So I'm going to do five different straight pours. Green, red, green, red, green. And then after I've tilted to stretch it all out, I will remove the tape, and then I may paint white stripes to kind of separate out those areas. I haven't decided because it depends on how it looks when it's finished. But I have five different greens over here of different colors. This is a metallic. So I have a metallic green. I have metallic silver. Two little cups of it. It's not two different colors. It's just I had it in little cups. So two little cups of silver, two regular greens, a metallic green, and then this one. This is one of the Deco Art Satin Enamels paints, which can help make those kind of cloudy boulder cells in a straight pour. So I have that. And then on this side, I have two reds. This is primary red and crimson. I have gold, I have metallic magenta, and I have white, which is house paint. This is my Glidden Essentials eggshell. I love using house paint in uh, straight pours because house paint has a lighter density than regular acrylic paints. And so it forms those nice kind of cloudy uh, boulder cells really nicely. Also white paint, white house paint stacks better in a cup than white acrylic paint because regular acrylic paint in white is a denser color and so it sinks. White house paint stays on top. So that's that's why I'm using that. Uh, yeah, my colors, they're all mixed with Floetrol. About two to three parts Floetrol for every part of paint because this is mostly tube paints versus craft paints. Um, there, there were a couple where I didn't mix it that heavily. It was only one to two parts Floetrol instead of two to three. Um, but if you don't know how to mix your paint with Floetrol, check out the video description box. I have a link down there that shows how I do it. All right, I think that's all my details. Let's make a painting. So I'm going to layer up my two cups, and I thought about doing a separate cup for each thing, but I think I'm just going to do big cups and, you know, sort of pour them one at a time. So I'm going to start with my greens. I love this dark green, so I'll put that down at the bottom. Silver. My paint is all mixed. I didn't show you consistency. I'm sorry. This is all medium to medium thin. So it flows very nicely. It's not really thin. It makes a little mound which goes away after a couple of seconds. Um, you don't want your paints really thick for a straight pour or they won't react with each other. In general, the thinner your paints are, the more they will blend and get muddy. So figuring out kind of the, the sweet spot of not too thick, but not too thin for most of your basic pores. It's a, it's a great skill and it's something that you just have to develop as you practice acrylic pouring. Um, okay, I don't want to mix it 
I don't want to layer it all exactly the same every time. And I think I'm probably going to have to layer the green cup again. I doubt I can get three sections out of one cup. So I'll do the main center one and then maybe add some colors to it before I do the other two sides. I'm not sure. So all these paints are stacking really nicely together. There isn't any color that's dropping down underneath, so that's good. Okay, I'm going to start with that. That's going to be plenty for this, and then I can add more color to it for the side panels. All right, let's do reds. So this one looks quite pink. This is a uh, primary red, but that's just because it has Floetrol in the mix. It's going to dry more of a straight red. And then this crimson looks lovely and red, and it's going to dry darker than that. So we have more or less a warm set of colors and a cool set of colors. Also, I just realized I didn't put any white over here in the green, which is not so great. I'm going to put some white in. Yeah, I don't... Mm. I mean, it's got silver, so there's going to be... That's not so good. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to watch this. This is kind of a cool trick. I want to get white down deeper in the cup. If I pour it carefully in the top, it'll float. Watch this. Woo! Dropping it from a height makes it go down in. Now, it also makes it blend a bit, but that way I've gotten some white paint down into the cup more. Okay. Whew! Got my white in there. Back to this. Gorgeous. That looks great. And hopefully this one cup will be enough for both of my red sections. So I'm going to pour the two red sections first, and then I'm going to pour the middle green section. And then if I need to add some more paint to the green cup, I will before I do the outer two sections. Then we'll tilt it, pull up the tape, and it'll be wonderful. All right. Um, yeah, so straight pour. I'm going to kind of alter my height to create some different patterns, different cell variety, and then we'll come over here. Well, that's really pretty. Okay, let me do this other one. Okay, so this one's much more red and gold, and this one's much more blended. I'm going to quickly make a little bit more because this is what you get from the top of a cup. The, your colors are much cleaner. This is what you get from the bottom of a cup. So I'm just going to mix a little cup of some cleaner colors to kind of add into this. I really like this. I just, yeah. Hmm. 
Okay. I think I blended those two halves pretty decently there. Cool. Very pretty. I love, love the color blend. And I got some of this sort of red and gold to match over here, so I'm happy with that. Okay, green cup now. Beautiful. I think that's going to be enough paint for the middle, so let me add some more for the other two sides. What I'm going to do for these two sides, because I don't want all the paint to run off the side before I can use it, is I'm going to make a little wall on each side here. And it's not a complete wall, but it'll help catch the paint and keep it all from running off too soon. Let's pour this one. And this one. All right, this is really cool. I'm gonna cover my corners a little bit with the leftover green blend. This is really pretty. I've never done something quite this bold and patterned, so I'm excited. Okay, I'm gonna send it, I think this way first. I don't like that, pick that up. Let's tilt down this way. And because obviously there's five puddles going at once, I don't have total control. So I'm gonna lose certain, certain ones faster than I'd like. Okay, we're gonna come back there. And I'm just gonna fill in this spot Okay, before we lose too much, I'm gonna bring it back this way. All right, stand back up there. This is the problem with not having my tape standing up all the way. Come on, fill it out. Okay, I gotta cover this because it's not wanting to cover by itself. Didn't have quite enough paint there. Okay, at this point, I'm just about ready to pull up these pieces of tape. I want to make sure that everything's pretty balanced first. Right now everything's getting squashed, so I'm just going to carefully peel that up. Hey, that actually looks pretty good. Cool. Uh, let's do this one, because it's also squashing over. So that one we got a lot more smear here in the red section. Right, this one's starting to flatten as well, so let's pull that one up. And this one...
And then finally our two end pieces, which I think as I pull it off, it's just gonna... Yeah, the paint's gonna flop down over the side. Hey, hey, look at that! So it's not perfect. Uh, I'm gonna get the, the connection points tweaked a little bit. And for that, I'm gonna use a little palette knife. Just so that I can add paint exactly where I need it. So most likely... I will be painting some white stripes over these transitional areas just to make it really sharp. But I do need my entire paint surface to be level. So it has to be all, all covered with paint at this point. Okay, so I have all the edges covered, all of the little transitional points taken care of. This is really cool. I love all the different patterns and waviness and metallics that I see. So that's awesome. I'm gonna give it a quick torch because I do see some bubbles in the paint. Right. I think that's all that I can do for now. Let me give you a close-up. Okay, this is pretty cool. I do love the warm and cold alternating, and we got lots of beautiful detail here in the from the straight pour. Lots of layers and cloudiness and natural cells. And then yeah, so that bold red and gold striping that's because it was at the top of the cup and then as we get further down in here we get more of the little cells and the kind of mixed colors really beautiful i love this pocket of the green it is so dynamic and you see the shimmer in there that's i don't know if that's the silver or the metallic green but it's really beautiful and then yeah lots of cells in this red and then here's where I added the more saturated paint there on top. And another little triangle of green. So this is really pretty. I will come back when this is dry and show you the next step, which is painting those white lines. See you then. Okay, the canvas is dry. It's looking great. There were a couple of areas, those green triangles on the side, where they kind of spread out and, and bowed their lines a little bit. So what I'm doing right here is I am marking off six inch intervals and I'm gonna redraw those diagonal lines so that I can paint some white stripes in between my color segments. And that will help um, sort of hide the places where the lines got uneven, and it'll also create some really great contrast in between the red and the green. So I'm just making some kind of dotted lines that I can follow as I'm laying down my tape. You see in this section right here, the green really bowed out past its line. So my white line had to be wide enough that it could cover that entire stretched out section. So now I'm gonna get some tape and put it on either side of where I'm putting my white stripe. I happen to be almost out of my one inch blue tape, so I'm cutting a larger piece of tape in half, which is a little bit more work than it has to be, but it works for today. And then I'm just kind of eyeballing the distance to say, all right, how much of this can I cover up and still leave it where it falls nicely on the corner of the canvas? Um, so I just kind of went by feel there to see what what seemed right. And then I matched that 
uh, line spacing on the other side as well. So I'm using straight tube paint here. You could add a little bit of water, but it's nice to be able to use um, essentially a straight paint because it goes on, it makes a really opaque layer instead of transparent, so you can do it all in one layer. Also, it dries quickly, and when you peel the tape up from it, it's very clean. It doesn't drip all over the place. So that's what I'm doing here. So just brush it on, make a nice, smooth, thick layer of paint. And then I'm peeling up the tape. Look at that clean line, that's awesome. And then I'm just laying the tape straight away over to the next section because you can reuse it. That's what's great about using straight tube paint because it dries quickly enough that it's not gonna smear on your painting. So again, I'm just kind of eyeballing the distance between my pieces of tape so that all my stripes are pretty much the same size. You could measure it if you want. And then rub down the tape really well, make sure it's stuck well to the canvas, and then go ahead and add your paint. So one part that I don't show you here is I did extend the white lines down the side of the canvas. That was harder to show on camera, so I didn't film it. It was very simple though, and you can see how this tape made the lines go so so well. I love this. Let me show you how it looks when it's all finished. Okay, here it is all done. These white stripes really add a whole bunch of contrast and tie the whole thing together, so I'm so happy that I did that. There was this one spot right here along the side where I needed to add some red where the white didn't cover it, and I also added some white because this white section right here was touching the white of the stripe, and I wanted to make some separation there, so I just added a little bit of red and gold. But it is so shimmery, beautiful. Love all those cells in there. Yeah, it's just awesome. I particularly like this green section. It's so, so cold and reminiscent of evergreen trees. So I'm really happy with this. Thank you guys for joining me for this painting tutorial, and I hope it inspired you to try something new, just like I was trying something new today. Thanks again to Claire for the inspiration on this piece, and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye guys!